Today I have a Galaxy A21 on the desk. This one is looking pretty good, aside from whoever put the screen protector on. Not only is it probably not for this phone, it's covering half the selfie camera. However, our issue lies with the charger. Over to the ammeter, you can see that the phone is pulling amperage only when I apply upward pressure. Anything half an amp or more is enough to charge the battery. When I let off the pressure, it drops to nothing. It's not uncommon for the solder joints to break off with enough force. Here's a replacement A21 charging board. You can see the row of pins are exposed. This is typically where it disconnects if too much force is applied to the tray inside. Let's get this taken apart. Over to my new, already dirty heating mat to soften the adhesive behind the plastic back panel. But go easy, because too much heat will melt or warp the back. A thin metal pry tool will help cut through the adhesive. Thankfully the midframe below is completely shielded and immune from violent slicing. Once all the adhesive has been cut away, it's pretty easy to just pop the back panel right off. Up top, we'll find 10 standard size Phillips screws securing the top of the all-in-one midframe. As far as I can tell, these are all the same size, threading, and length, so there's no real worry about mixing them up. You don't have to keep a screw map for this one. Down at the bottom, we've got six more screws to remove. There's a gap between the plastic midframe and the plastic bezel of the screen. Wedging a thicker pry tool between the layers will allow me to snap off the plastic midframe. Now the midframe can be removed and set aside, revealing the entire internal layout of this phone. You can probably guess what happens next. Disconnecting the battery is pretty important. Back to the bottom, there are four additional screws that need to be removed. The plastic speaker housing can be popped off from the headphone jack. Yeah, this phone still has a headphone jack. An antenna line is woven in between the plastic panel, so be sure to disconnect it before removing it entirely. Now the daughter board can be pried away from the light adhesive that holds it in the body. The headphone jack again makes for a great pry point. This rubber gasket is meant to... Well, I'm not really sure to be honest. It doesn't do much other than get in my way. Using some tweezers, I'll apply light pressure to the pins to figure out which ones have detached. And based on that entire port rocking back and forth, it looks like every solder joint has snapped. No problem though. I'll add some flux across the pads, then use a bent nose soldering iron to reattach each point one by one. Chances are you might have an easier time soldering without a DSLR and microscope in front of you, but yeah, your mileage may vary. I'll grab the tweezers again to check that everything is fully seated. Some isopropyl alcohol will clean off the flux. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it definitely makes it look cleaner. I'll reconnect the charging board along with the essentials for testing and head back over to the amp meter. Plugging it in now, we get a consistent amperage reading regardless of which direction the cord is pulled. Finally, it's time to reassemble and get this one back to its owner. Thanks a ton for joining me. Oddly enough, my subscribers only account for about 1% of my views. If this video helped you out, please consider subscribing. It helps me out and costs nothing. See you next time.